Classic Burning Crusade has finally launched after years of anticipation, and just as fast, all of its content has already been cleared by players. Well, at least the content available so far. Less than 13 hours after the game launched, the first players already reached level 70, and in less than 24 hours, all of Karazhan, Gruul's Lair, and Mctheridon's Lair, which are the only raids available at the moment, have been cleared. But those are not the only crazy differences between original TBC and classic TBC. In this video, we're gonna go over the main key differences between the original and the remade product and see in which way are they actually different. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's start from the beginning, the launch. Classic Burning Crusade's launch has been overwhelmingly smooth. In fact, the smoothest any launch has ever been. At least that's the experience we had on our server, Pyroid Village EU. Thanks to a couple of new technologies that the developers of the game put in place, which we will talk about in a moment, Blizzard managed to deliver an incredibly smooth launch experience for the vast majority of players. The Dark Portal was set to open globally at 3 p.m. Pacific time or midnight European time, and it has. At that exact time, players poured through the Dark Portal and everyone went about their day to reach max level. Different players had different plans in mind to accomplish that, which we will talk about in a moment, but even players who decided to level the old-fashioned way by simply questing in Hellfire Peninsula still managed to do that relatively easily. This is a complete contrast to the original 2007 launch in January 16, 2007, where servers lagged and crashed several times for days before the game was finally stable. And also, even though a lot of players did not directly go to Hellfire Peninsula originally, some of them started brand new level 1 Blood Elves and Draenei and were leveling through old zones at launch, which was not the case in Classic TBC, players had 2 weeks to level their Draenei and Blood Elves in the pre-patch. But even though though not everyone was technically in Hellfire Peninsula at launch originally, the game was still infinitely more stable for the relaunch of the game 15 years later. This is mainly thanks to layering, which is a technology that Blizzard used extremely aggressively this time around in Classic TBC. We had words of some servers having upwards of 15 layers. That's 15 copies of the world with players spread across them. So the servers did not even have the chance to lag. On top of that, even though servers are 3 to 5 times larger in size nowadays compared to how they were back in 2007, the actual server technologies themselves evolved so much throughout these years, but the game stood the same mostly, that this allowed Blizzard to prepare way more easily for launch than they ever could have dreamed of back in the day. So that was launch, but as soon as players went through the dark portal, the real game started. And it started with leveling. Everyone's main goal for the next couple weeks, months, or even years will be to get their characters to level 70. And without much surprise, a lot of players already did that. A leveling group from the famous guild Progress on Firemall EU achieved world first level 70 in Classic Burning Crusade in just over 13 hours. Thanks to a combination of stockpiling quest turn-ins and an extremely meticulous and precise leveling route. This game is a bit of a surprise for a lot of players, by the way, me included. A lot of players thought that the world first level 70 player would be a solo dungeon grinding warlock or mage, and the data was definitely there to support that theory from the beta. Players found insanely fast routes to level solo in dungeons, but clearly group dungeon leveling won instead. For comparison, the world first level 70 in original Burning Crusade was a player called Gullerbone, who achieved level 70 in 28 hours by having his friends and guild members boost him. He would tag a bunch of mobs in the outside world and have his friends kill them for him. At first, he started with a group of 5 players helping him, but by the end, when players got word of this, he managed to gather a raid of 35 players to help him in Netherstorm with his mob tagging frenzy. So Gullerbone's world first was beaten by progress almost two and a half times faster, with just five players who all reached max level at roughly the same time. This really isn't surprising knowing how much more knowledgeable players are nowadays, and by looking at what players managed to achieve in Classic WoW, but it is always incredible to see the extent of which players advanced in 15 years. Back in the day, we had simply no clue what we were doing, and nowadays, for some of us, it is literally our job to play this game non-stop. 
But anyways, after players reach level 70, they obviously turn their attention to the real trophy, World First Karazhan, Gruul and Mechtheridon. And again, Progress managed this feat. Less than 24 hours after the Dark Portal opened, Progress gathered 25 of their players from level 68 to 70 and took on the challenge of killing Gruul, Mechtheridon and Prince Malkazar with mostly green gear. And they managed to do that in under 24 hours from the game's launch. In comparison, the original World First Clear of Karazhan was achieved by the guild Death and Taxes. It's hard to find a precise date, but the oldest article for this is from January 28, 2007, 12 days after the game launch. And then Gruul was killed by the guild Nihilum on February 3, 2007, 18 days after launch. And finally, Mechtheridon was killed by Nihilum on February 24, 2007, a whopping 39 days after launch, thanks to the encounter being very buggy overall. But that's the main thing here. Originally, raid encounters in Burning Crusade were very bugged and mostly untested in 2007. For classic TBC, players have been testing those raids for days on the beta, and even weeks in the case of Karazhan, and giving feedback on top of feedback to have a super smooth experience at launch. Which allowed not only that, but it also allowed guilds like Progress to practice. And with all those factors put into play, it is not so surprising anymore that all those raids were cleared less than 20 four hours from launch. And unlike Classic WoW's beta, where players were limited to level 40 and no raid testing was publicly done, Blizzard went the complete opposite direction for Classic TBC. Everything was tested to the most thorough extent, and by the end, everyone who had signed up to the beta got invited to it and given free max level characters with full pre base gear ready to test all the raids. Keeping the content as a mystery is clearly not Blizzard's concern anymore, and they are clearly looking for increasing the quality of the content and getting as much feedback as possible instead of keeping it novel and new for players to discover. Originally, in 2007, as weird as it sounds, the game launched with a lot more content available. Players could technically enter all those three raids, plus Serpent Shrine Caverns, Tempest Keep and even Mount Hyjal, right from day one, if they managed to get it tuned in time. Although, thanks to a combination of very buggy and untested raids, and players who had no experience at all with those, the Guild Nihilum only managed to kill Lady Vash on March 29, 2007, and Kaelta us on May 25th, 2007, many months after the game launched, even though those were technically accessible from day one. Another interesting thing to note on that regard, when TBC launched in China in September 2007, with all those raids available and debugged and knowledge available from European and North American guilds, a Chinese guild called The Seven managed to clear all the content up to Black Temple in just over one and a half months after the game launched. This goes to show how efficient players can be when the knowledge is out there. And now, 15 years later, this is more true than ever. Blizzard recognized that and that's why they decided not to release the game as it was originally. If they did, Lady Vash, Keltas and Archimonde would probably already be killed and the game would only have a couple raids left to be released in over two years. As for me, I am still in the process of grinding those levels. I am currently level 68 as of the time of writing this video and my goal is to reach level 70, get it tuned and get some pre-raid biz before I set foot in my all-time favorite raid. Karazhan to fight Prince Malkazar. I did not have the chance to kill him on the beta, which makes me even more excited to do that fight 14 years later. But how was your launch experience and what is your plan? Have you reached level 70 yet or are you like me still grinding those levels? Do you plan on rushing to move to the next character or do you want to take all your time and enjoy what the game has to offer? Let me know in the comments, I'm very curious to know. This video was a bit different than we usually do them on this channel, but I had a lot of fun making it. If you liked it, as usual, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Curios channel for more classic TBC content like this. I I will see you guys in the next one very soon. Bye for now.